How can I be righteous without being self-righteous? I'm Justin Bates with the Ask in Faith podcast, where each week we seek Christ-centered answers to life's difficult questions. If that sounds interesting to you, please subscribe so you'll never miss an episode and send us your questions so that we can work together to find answers. I think the best way to answer this question, uh, as we're trying to find Christ-centered answers to our questions, is to look at Jesus Christ, the one person who was perfectly righteous, but also not even in the smallest degree self-righteous. Let's take a uh, a look at a couple of examples here from the scriptures. In Matthew chapter 5, the Savior is giving his famous Sermon on the Mount, and he shares this passage that we're all really familiar with, but I think it has some keys as to how we can strive for righteousness, but not delve into the pride associated with self-righteousness. And we'll pick up in verse, well, let's do 14 through 16. Christ says, ye are the light of the world, right? He's talking to the the disciples and to the the people that are his followers. He says, a city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. (laughs) So I love that part. I think we skip over that sometimes. It's basically saying that you're going to be seen whether you like it or not. Whether you're being righteous or not, you are going to be seen because you're a city set on a hill. Uh, So I guess it kind of asks, what kind of a person do you want to be? Right, So I hope that whoever's asking this question isn't like, well, maybe I should just not be righteous, not follow the commandments so that I don't stand out. Like, that's not a good idea. You're going to stand out regardless. Uh, So let's stand out for, for good and stand up for God. Verse 15, neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, right, somewhere that's visible, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Okay, so we seem to have this responsibility as disciples of Jesus Christ to share light. Verse 16, Here's the key. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify you? No, that's not what it says at all. It says, and glorify your Father, which is in heaven. And so one thing that I would invite us to consider is the motives for which we're doing those good works. Why are we striving for righteousness? Is it to draw attention to ourselves and to say, look at me, look at all the good things I did? Look at how often I clean the church, or how much I pay in tithing, or how eloquent I pray. Or are we doing those good works and those righteous acts because we really love him, and we want to point all attention to him and, and who he is? Um, and I'll give you a quick example, I'll tell you a quick story. So when I was a teenager, we did this activity. It was super fun. It was called On Target. And what we did is, is we went up to these mountains uh, or, you know, big hills or whatever in Arizona. And on a clear day, which is most days in Arizona, you could see a great distance. And there was a bunch of other groups of kids and youth that did the same thing on the same day on other mountains, some of them as far as I think like 30 miles away. And you had a radio. And so you communicate with the people around and try and figure out where people are at. And what you would do is you would hold this big mirror and the sunlight, you'd angle it such that the sunlight would shine onto the mirror and then shine out to... Uh, whatever place you were trying to shine the light to, right, where these other youth were at. And so what you try to do is just, like, direct it such. Um, and if you had a nice clean mirror and you were paying attention to which direction you should be pointing it, you could shine that light for miles and miles, and they could see it, and they could feel it, or not feel it, but, like, see that light from a great distance, and even more so if they were close. But no one in their right mind, I certainly wasn't, none of, none of us that had the mirror were like, hey, look at us. We are the sun. That's us. We are the light. That would have been stupid. Like, we weren't the source of the light. Now put your spiritual ears on here. We were not the source of the light. We were reflecting the source of the light, which is Christ. Okay? And as long as we keep that in our heads and remember that we are to hold him up, he is the light of the world, and we serve him, and we love him, and we share him. That, that, I think, can go a long way to helping us um, strive for righteousness without self-righteousness. Okay, let's look at another scripture. Okay, in Acts chapter 10, verse 38, it says, God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. And it talks about Jesus Christ. And I've heard this is, is, some have said this is the best synopsis of Jesus Christ, like sermon in a sentence. Who went about doing good. And then skip down a little bit, for God was with him. So I guess a second key that I would throw in here about trying to be righteous without being self-righteous is to go about doing good with God. 
right? It's not about drawing attention to oneself. It's about going out to others and serving. And look how Jesus did that. His whole life was about doing good for others. And on one occasion, as I recall, when somebody said, good master, right? And, and, and tries to give him some sort of compliment, um, he says, there is none good but God. And on another occasion said, the son doeth nothing, save that which he hath seen the father do. And he's constantly pointing back to the father. Um, he does good work, certainly, but he does those in an effort to point to God, right? Which I guess kind of builds on that Matthew 5 verse. Okay, so Elder Uchtdorf, Dieter F. Uchtdorf, who's an apostle as of the recording of this video, he shared the following in April 2011 in a talk called Waiting on the Road to Damascus. It was really, really good talk. I highly recommend it. But this is the part that I really loved. He said, one of the greatest sermons ever pronounced on missionary work is this simple thought attributed to St. Francis of Assisi. Quote, preach the gospel at all times, and if necessary, use words. Close quote. Righteousness doesn't have to be about me telling you how righteous I am or me telling you all the things you're doing wrong or me saying, sit down, I've got a lot to teach you. But rather it's by example. A righteous example, I would submit, will go a lot farther than a righteous sermon. And Jesus Christ is the perfect example of that. Like, yes, he, did he preach sermons? Absolutely. But more often the things we remember from Jesus Christ are the things that he did and the people that he served and the way that he lived his life. And I would suggest that it's the same for us. If we want to reflect his light, we need to act in the way that he acted and do the things he did insofar as we're able. Let's go about doing good. Okay, one last scripture. Let's take a look. This is Doctrine and Covenants, section 50, um, which can, again can help us to understand how can we be righteous without being self-righteous. Now, I talked about earlier, like, he is the light, right? Jesus Christ is the light, and absolutely that is true. He's the light of the world, but he gives us some counsel in section 50 that I think can be helpful for us as we seek to grow in light and truth and knowledge. There's a comparison in Doctrine and Covenants between light and truth, that they're almost synonymous, okay? And here's what he says. Verse 24, that which is of God is light, and he that receiveth light, or in other words, receiveth things from God, and continueth in God, receiveth more light, and that light groweth brighter and brighter until the perfect day. I say it that you may know the truth, that you may chase darkness from among you. All right, and the concept, the way I imagine this is, imagine that we are containers of light and truth. And God is sending it to us as fast as we're able to receive, right? The Lord sends line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little and there a little. Um, I believe it was Elder Maxwell, Neil A. Maxwell, that said that for those who have eyes to see, God is giving away the mysteries of the universe, right? Like he's just pouring it down on us as quickly as we're able to receive it. And as we receive it, and that that's not just I heard it and I wrote it down, but I am now making that a part of who I am. Right? So if God's going to teach me something about charity, I'm just going to say, oh, charity is the pure love of Christ. Check. I understand that. But I'm going to embody charity. I'm going to seek to become a charitable Christ-like person. I'm going to receive that light and use it in my life. And as we do that, we grow brighter. Right? The, the, it's clearly metaphorical, but I wonder if sometimes it's not a little bit literal that we'll grow brighter and brighter in light and truth as we continue to receive all that God is sending to us. And that light shows. Have you ever met somebody who just seemed to shine? That there was a spirit about them, a goodness about them, a light about them? I'm convinced that that's part of why so many people were attracted to Jesus Christ. That undoubtedly there was a spirit and a light about him because of the way he chose to live. And I hope we do the same right? Let us be righteous. We don't want to shy away from righteousness. Let's strive our best, and we're constantly going to fail, and we're constantly going to need to repent, but let's strive to, to do good works for the sake of others and for the sake of our Father in heaven, because we love God and we love our neighbor, not because we want to draw attention to ourselves. Let's remember who the source of light is, and let's receive everything that he's willing to send to us so that our light which is ultimately from him, can grow brighter and brighter until the perfect day. And we can chase darkness from amongst us. I hope we'll do that. I hope that's helpful. Um, and I say that in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 
Thank you for listening to the Ask in Faith podcast. If this has been helpful for you, please like, share, subscribe, leave a review. It really does help. We want to get this message to as many of God's children as possible and appreciate your support. Have a great week.